The last video showed how the 32-bit floating point number format encodes numbers using a specific example. This video will generalize your understanding of the 32-bit floating point number format and also point out some exceptions in strange cases in this format. Here we see these boxes representing the 32 bits that can make up a floating point number in this format, numbered counting down. And we have S referring to the bit at position 31, which is the sign bit, where 1 is for negative and 0 is for positive. E will represent the bits from 30 down to 23. This is the bias exponent. And F represents the bits from 22 down to 0. F is a fractional component that represents the significant. Now, the normal way of interpreting these symbols, which was shown in the previous video, is to first get the sign of the number. So if we have negative 1 raised to the power of s, then if s is 0, negative 1 to the 0 is 1, and so we will have a positive value. If s is 1, then negative 1 raised to the 1 is negative 1, and we will have a negative value. So we have negative 1 raised to the s times 1 point f, and so this is representing the fact that we always assume in the normal situation that a one and a decimal point, or in this case a binary point, are to the left of whatever sequence of bits make up this fractional significant. And that further is multiplied by two, which is our base, raised to the power of e minus 127. Now, the reason 127 is used is because this is the bias for our particular floating point representation. E is the actual binary number value here, and then we subtract 127 from it to get the exponent that's being represented. Now, this normal interpretation of these bits is what we will use if E is strictly greater than 0 and strictly less than 255. Now, this differs a bit from the discussion in the previous video. First, note that E is the biased value, and so the unbiased value, or the range of actual exponents we represent, is E minus 127. So that means that the actual exponent we can represent, E minus 127, is going to be greater than negative 127 and less than 128. Now, if you are good with your binary numbers, then you should realize that this means that if E is all zeros or all ones, we'll have values outside of this range, and we have a different interpretation of the bits in these fields. And that is necessary, because as was pointed out last time, we don't have a way of representing zero. And these special cases can be used to represent zero, among other things. So if we have a situation where E equals zero and F also equals zero, meaning that all bits throughout these two fields are zeros, then the way we interpret that is as a zero except we also have this sign bit still. So we technically have both a negative and a positive zero. Now, this is a minor annoyance. 
when representing integers, we went out of our way to remove the positive and the negative zero. But in the floating point format, because there are already so many complications and special cases, which we'll see more of in a moment, we allow both a negative and a positive zero. However, this interpretation is actually just a special case of the following. Consider what happens if f is not zero. Now, we don't want to throw away all the possible numbers we could represent by having different value bits in this range. So, in general, if e is equal to zero, the way we will represent it is very similar to normal representation. Well, but what we have instead is a sub normal representation. This will allow us to represent even smaller numbers. Specifically, the sign bit will be interpreted the same way, but instead of having one and then a binary point and then the fractional bits, we will have a zero and then a binary point and then the fractional bits. And in this case, the exponent we will multiply by will always be negative 126. Now, if e is 0, then e, then this happens to be exactly the value you would expect, except shifted by 1. And that is a design decision that allows smaller numbers, keeping in mind that we will have a 0 at the front of our fractional bit rather than a 1 as before. That still leaves us with some more possibilities. We know what happens if all of the bits in the exponent are zeros. But what if all of the bits in the exponents are ones? That would correspond to a value of 255, which we have excluded from our normal representation. These special cases are reserved for two possibilities. One is the infinities, specifically positive or negative infinity. This is the infinity symbol. Sort of looks like an eight turned on its side. I will specify that. And this is how we interpret the floating point number if e is equal to 255, in other words, all ones. And also, f is equal to zero, all zeros. And so that leaves us with the case where f is not equal to zero. So if f is not zero, but e is all ones, then the result is nan for not a number. So this result is used to handle various exceptional circumstances. For example, dividing by infinity would not be a number and several other strange cases will lead to a result of not a number. There are two forms of NAN, and they both depend on what the first bit of f is. Now going back to this representation here, we see that the first bit is in the 22nd position, b sub 22. So if b sub 22 is equal to 1, then this leads to a quiet, not a number. And this is in the case where e is equal to 255 and f is not equal to 0. Now a quiet, not a number, means that a result of not a number will be returned but that it will not 
cause an exception that potentially crashes the program or causes problems. In contrast, if v22 equals zero, then this is a signaling, not a number. And so this is a more serious result which could cause a program to crash or at the very least cause it to need to handle this exceptional circumstance. So all of these possibilities explain how to interpret the very complicated 32-bit floating-point number format.